Tara Town is the new Wordsworth Poetry Curator, and, uh, and she'll continue to bring, uh, present poets to open up the meetings. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Tara Lynn to you. Tara Lynn Towns is from Colorado. She graduated from New York University. She was a professional actor for 10 years in New York, Ashland, Denver, Los Angeles, and Seattle. Four years ago, she retired from acting and now reads through Higher Terrain, her Christian publishing house, or I should say she writes through that, Higher Terrain, her Christian publishing house. The following piece is from Tara Lynn's first book of poetry, Waterf Waterfall Dew. A moment worth its weight in gold. It was summer, and a woman made her way to the post. She wasn't old. She was past that. She was in that ageless zone somewhere between 90 and 110, and she read the blue letter box. She read the times for pickup, but then she began to read the longer message written in red. She stood in the light of a sunny day with people mulling around her off 47th and 9th, and she stood there running her finger along every word. She took such care, and she took such time, that as I sat behind her against a large window at an Italian bistro, I could have cried. Time meant something else to this lady, and she was taking it. She must have seen so much. She must see every day she opens her eyes so differently than the rest of us. And the day would be filled with hours, and the hours would be filled with minutes, and the minutes would be filled with moments. And she was filling those moments the way Martha Graham or Eleanor Dusa might fulfill an auditorium. She took her time, or perhaps time fell away. It was a magnificent thing to behold. Thank, Thank you. you. At 86, Olive Larson is an artist, gardener, world traveler, collector, and avid book reader from Queen Anne. She has four children, four grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. Olive was born in Wanganui and raised in Wellington, New Zealand. She worked at the U.S. Navy headquarters of the South Pacific, and in 1943, when she met Stanley Larson, an active U.S. Marine, she saw as a bag of bones and a hunk of hair at first sight. Now, some 60 anniversaries later, she remembers her wedding day. Wellington wedding. 1943, you stand between two friends, face luminescent pale beneath Guadalcanal tan. A long unknown aisle divides us. Gothic beams hewn from giant cowries backdrop stability to empty choir pews. Stained glass windows cascade rainbows of color on the Dean and Marine Corps chaplain. Friends fill a cathedral. Know a man for four seasons, my father used to say, but not for us the leisure of summer courting days. My love, I hardly know you. Will there be time before the red blood of your life mingles with unknown jungle ooze? Green slipper orchids quiver among cool maidenhair. My icy palm against a small bouquet, I feel my father's arm gentling. Down the aisle to the dark blue of your Nordic eyes, an impeccable uniform on a body already ravaged by months of steamy jungle fighting. My hand in yours is warmed the binding words surround us. <clears throat> but do I know you? The signing done, now we are man and wife, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. Time is all we ask, but you are gone at dawn and cannot say where or when or if we meet again. Thank you for that beautiful poem, Alan.
Juanita is a former teacher both in the Seattle City Public School District and in the state of California. One of the lights of her life is here to help illustrate her piece, Just By Being, Casey May. Introspective Casey, sensitive little soul, beautiful little one with a smile of gold. Amazing is her mind, her thought process is clear, her sharing sometimes rare, which makes it oh so dear. Her wondrous grasp of words flow at her discretion. Her hugs made more special, given at her direction. However, her lovely eyes with love and wisdom shine to share her secrets, a special gift of mine. To risk a new adventure is hard for her to do, but she accepts the challenge, then her pride shows through. Oh, Casey May, our Casey, what a special girl. God grant you strength and joy as you face your world. Thank you. This is Anne Overstreet. <coughs> Anne M. Doe Overstreet grew up in Roswell, New Mexico, traveling from there across the Western Hemisphere, from Iowa to Georgia to Scotland, before landing here in Seattle about 15 years ago. She hopes to never live east of the Mississippi again. She is a graduate of the UW's Writing Certificate Program and has read locally at Barnes and Nobles, Third Place Books, and The Hugo House. When not writing, she divides her time up between her jobs as a freelance editor and as a private gardener. Thank you. Anne will be reading Shade Half Drawn. Shade Half Drawn. How strange. The only people in the street, these two, a girl, an aunt or grandmother, strolling statelier than lilies grow. In weather, they make a small crowdedness for warmth, fly before the rain like chaff. Immune to change, they come on day after day in a small pink coat in practical beige, linked by fingers, the walk home from the store. Till the sidewalk is thick with girls and grandmothers, there is no sound except the shuffle of sensible shoes and the tattoo of first heels. Lavender along the sidewalk knots and unknots its fragrance. The light changes around the window, stretched by the maples shooting skyward. A hand pulls away, and it breaks your heart. You want to do something sacrificial and magnificent to preserve those figures under a turning sky that is not on fire, that does not fill with ash, under a sky that lowers only fat snow clouds onto the roofs and ornamental cherries. Thank you. Thank you. He's the publisher of Pacific Publishing Company, which publishes the Queen Anne News, Magnolia News, Capitol Hill Times, Beacon Hill News and South District Journal, North Seattle Herald Outlook, Madison Park Times, and the Kirkland Cur Courier. His two books of poetry are The Road Behind, published by Red Moon Press, and Riverbank, published by the Bellowing Art Press. He has read in a number of Seattle venues, including the Seattle Art Museum and the Fry. And he will do for us today vigils. Thanks, Tarlyn. Thank you for having me, it's an honor. Um, this is called Vigils, and Vigils is one of the monastic hours associated with Jacob wrestling the angel. When you turned out the light, you thought just of another bad night's sleep ahead. And at first you slept until a doubled fist dug into your hip socket and yanked your trout white pain from the deep. And so the fight was on with something mulish, something heavier than the midnight stone that squeezes your breath into the hovering ghosts of those things you know you did long ago. All night you two wrestled 
until the first robin caroled. A strange voice croaked, let me go. And it was your voice, sure as rifle crack, you heard declare, not until you bless me. You rise from the empty storm-tossed bed. You draw back the yellow curtain, your mind clear as blue sky after a week of rain. Out the window, more rain. Dried blood throbs beneath your nails. Out on the sidewalk, you notice you are limping. You look around and see the others, too, are limping, some more, some less. Like a child, you want to call out to them, but instead keep silent as they thread their ways through the rain with the mysterious blessedness of the wounded, walking on, walking, just like you. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. It's very nice. And the piece is Tender Skin. Sitting at a small table, a table perched on flamingo legs, eating curried lentil soup, spelt blueberry scone as a side, I observe an elderly couple pushing a shopping cart they wheel like a baby carriage, measuring their steps, sharing the math of their lives, the simple calculations, adding, subtracting, chicken parts, hearts of palm, Swiss chard lying like giant green baby bibs in their cart, their lives a basket of rich autumn apples, sweetly soft inside, skin frail on the outside with the aging of shared winter winds. I long to be the tenderness that reaches between their bowed, aged, bent bodies, that bridges the openings of forgetfulness for them the same tenderness of dark which lies patiently between the stars, waiting a silver thread. A silver thread, her hair, lightly brushing his forearm as she turns to face her tall hedge of green dreams. Without her knowing, the dark center of the earth is reaching for his heart. I won't be the one to tell her this, nor will I be the one to brush the fine silver-webbed threads that reach between my branch and gate without a deep insistence to know my own tenderness. Thank you. Jane was raised in Seattle. She has a degree from the University of Washington and was blessed to have had professors such as George Sudakawa and Jacob Lawrence. Ten years ago, she left gallivanting the world buying diamonds to raise two children that came eight weeks apart. You'll have to meet her to find out how that happened. <laughs> she owns Horowitz Trading West in Queen Anne and is chairing a community arts event there at the end of the summer called the Uptown Stroll. This afternoon, accompanied by her Sam, the baseball all-star, she shares with us a piece she calls The Team With Soul, or Ron Cobbler's At The Bat. This, you will see, is a semi-fictional ballad of Queen Anne's Little League's finest team sung in the year 2004 with apologies to Ernest Lawrence Thayer. The outlook was outstanding for the Cobbler team that day, thanks to a certain batting cage Coach Ross had found a way. This crazy season started, standings cockeyed, won and lost. The patrons cheered in wind and rain and even threat of frost. Finally, the weather changed and two wins in a row, then back and forth some up and down as life will surely go. It's season's end, last playoff game, runs down six to 10. Oh, I forgot to mention the other team's young men. It seems to best run its cobblers, the other teams conspired. We need to find a way to keep that Davis Ross Club tired. They've seen better seasons, but you can't give them an inch. It's legend, cobblers play with soul. They rally in a pinch. It came to pass, we finally heard, the other teams agreed. Each would pick their top two players, much as a hybrid seed. A couple markets on the hill, Metro and Ken's by name, sent two and two the cobblers knew could really play the game. Two joined them from best plumbing. The five spot pair were key. That VI sent the best they had was obvious to see. It seemed a good idea. Or was it just a lark? Were they trying to build a ball club or get to fill an arc? 
With just two innings left to play, the cobbler's down by four. Martin's out there on the mound. The crowd lets out a roar. He winds it up and lets it rip to Josh behind the plate. The batter swings. He gets a hit. Horowitz dives. Too late. Later, best fives market aisle, the team melange take their last at bat. Cobblers hustle to the field. Intention, leave them flat. Kai is out there pitching, and he'll seal their fate. He's been working really hard. His sidearm is first rate. Pitcher throws. The batter womps the ball smack to Kai Hoyt's mitt. Surreally, the wind picks up, and not a little bit. The diamond swirls and whirls with dirt. The dust dies down, we finally see. It seems our Hoyt is hurt. He's not one to admit it, not to this very day, but with trauma to your arm like that, you really shouldn't play. It finally took Coach Cantor to make the salient point. Geez, Kai, how are you going to pitch? Your shoulder's out of joint. Cobblers have some work to do, needing three to tie, but if they keep on hitting, they'll get there by and by. What happened next is Queen Anne lore. It even has a name. They call it here Ron's Cobbler's Romp. It's this team's claim to fame. One by one, men took the plate, Jack Ross batting next. Each got a hit so easily, the other team was vexed. Nathan whacked another one, Kieran, Antho too. Lion took his up and hit as only Max can do. Charlie, J-Man hit home runs, and then, with some alarm, the crowd stood up and madly cheered. Kai hit with just one arm. The score you ask at this point, I doubt anyone quite knew. It really didn't matter, Ron's clobbered quite a few. Folks were tired but happy as the sun set in the sky. Both team hit the Av for sweets, friendships you can't deny. Best Five's market aisle was mighty, and we offer them hooray. But by blending sportsmanship and fun, Ron's cobblers won the day. That was pretty exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Joan Weeks. Joan was a young widow. She was raising four children, ranging in age from 15 months to 14 years, when her soldier husband was killed accidentally in 1974. In 1990, she returned to school. She volunteered for the Department of Corrections in Olympia, and her first paying job was with the Washington State Legislature. She later managed a mediation firm and she is currently living in Ballard. Please join me in receiving the poem that Joan dedicates to her late husband called Acceptance. Thank you, Carolyn. Acceptance. Tonight in the rain, your death fits me like a friendly cloak. The rain falls fast drops. Its tune draws me into the si softness of death. The black marble is soft, smooth like velvet. The light on your name is warm and inviting. You are there, and so too are many others. An officer's cap, the tiny flags and flowers. Speak of how many weep and then smile. The great oak tree shelters you all, and the freshly laid green sod takes root and folding and then rebirthing. Somehow, your name engraved in stone allows me to go on. And you watch and move me along. I can be proud now, and so can you. Thank you very much. It's very lovely. And as we uh, always do, we start with a poetry reading called Wordsworth. And uh, today, our curator, Carolyn Towns, is reading because this is her last day. Oh, so, Carolyn, thank you very much for curating this, this session. She informed me it was, it's been six months that you've been doing it so far. Yeah. And uh, we've certainly enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you have. I have. 
Okay. It has and been a what pleasure. do you have for us today? I'm going to share with you a piece I've written called Grace. Very close to my heart. Let's grow up together. Cut the bloody strings by standing for neither violence nor neglect. Whichever the extreme paralyzes and disfranchises, weaves a web so tight, burns the skin so tough, clips the wings, frostbites the lips so rough, and leaves a child crying peace at any cost. Ivy and clover came cloistering the sun, and leaven surrendered, looking after its fun. To harvest love, in trust, frozen, hot, whisper, forgotten, delicate motion, trickle, bone, mot, and droplet hint a sense that time passes on. You take the summer, and I'll take the spring, and together we'll feather this tender, balded thing, budding and pudding, beginning to thrive, settle, precious metal, a little rhythm, alive. I love you before I know you, feel you grow inside my soul. Have you ever before turned left when the blessing was right before your sighs? I remember a night when I lost the fight and the one that got away left but a few brutal blocks behind. And so I stand here still on this perilous pier and see it as the matter with trust to respond not out of lust to the unfolding of its lead. Plenty of seed lay strewn across the sky, only time and patience will give ground. Around my head swirls images of marriages and maternity dresses in blue and how to, to circumvent the delicacy of double celibacy is proof my orders are to stand still and see my salvation, and my salvation can see to my man. Look at how I'd run from society, in control of muffled, melting minutes that mostly might have been bored, restless, waiting for some something to afford me the moment and the audience and the chance to be a thing, a dream, a grand entity and blossom tree for all the world to cue, to see. Again, the courage is in breathing inspiration into every dog day, following the instinct of my heart, not mind it leading the way. And I have wasted time by the flitting still, gathering dust and bone and weight but even worse, I was scared to kill the cycles, threatening my blessed fate. Well, he's spinning it off now, and you're activating, and I'm releasing the need to shine, attracting attacks of tribulation because our calling is on the line. Now, if with God's free gift we receive, and from his grace we pour, a victory is there to share and ever so much more. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Thank you. Nice Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Carolyn, you're moving to Snohomish, so we'll, we'll be missing you as a Seattle resident as well then. I hope you'll come and visit. I will indeed. I'll come and I'll shop. Good shop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep the economy going. We appreciate it. That's right. <laughs>